What is a Mason? I am. Thank you, brother. My name is Jared, and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And this is the new tie of Grand Master Jason Jeffcoat. If you look closely, you'll notice it's very similar to the pattern used in the Noche tie, the solid black tie, and it was done by Edgar over at Masonic Revival. Along with the What is a Mason lapel pin, which you can find a lot more information about in the video description below or in the iCards, clicking on the little icon here on YouTube. Might as well get used to them. You'll probably see them a lot in the coming year. So yesterday I just got back from the 201st session of the annual communication of the Grand Lodge of Mississippi, uh, at which uh, at the end I have been appointed as Grand Librarian. Now let me uh, refer you over to my Facebook page where you can learn more about what it actually means to be Grand Librarian in the state of Mississippi. Uh, for summary, I'll say don't leave any congratulations, right worshipfuls down below. That would not be appropriate. So if you do already follow me on Facebook, then you know that at this last Grand Lodge communication, I had the honor of pro tempore acting as the Grand Orator. And I have already received several requests to hear that oration. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put up the PowerPoint slides that went along with it. Uh, I did have some slides that I used just as a vis visual representation of what I was talking about. There's no reading that really has to be done. Um, and I'm going to narrate my speech again uh, while those slides are up. So you can kind of get both. You're not going to just sit here and watch me talk. Um, one thing I will say here is that there is some specific leading being done in the speech. Uh, no secrets in here, uh, even though it was uh, given for the first time inside of a Master Mason's Lodge. Um, it's all public. But I was told that it would be proper for me to keep this speech to about five minutes in length. Um, so it's pretty close to that, but there was a lot more information. I could have easily been satisfied turning this into a half hour, 45 minute conversation. So it might get to that point uh, later in its life. But for now, we're going to focus on the five minutes. So uh, without any more discussion, here we are, the Grand Orator's speech from the 201st session of the annual communication of the Grand Lodge of Mississippi, which is titled, In This Sign. Most Worshipful Grand Master, Grand Lodge Officers, distinguished guests, and brethren all. I am humbled to stand before you today to act pro tempore as your grand orator. While right worshipful brother Jordan Downs is unable to address us today, I am sure that you will join me in recognizing him and expressing our gratitude and appreciation to the great architect of the universe for this inestimable brother still being among us. Brethren, from Ptolemy's recording of the ancient constellations, including Cygnus, or the Northern Cross, to the eventual adoption of the Crux, or Southern Cross, humanity has sought in the sacred pages of the celestial hemisphere an understanding of the sign of the Cross. As ancient and enduring as the stars are, nearly every human culture and numerous faiths have also used variants of this symbol for their own purposes. Of the multitude of Christian-related crosses in use today, four form the basis of these variants. Crux Quadrata, or the Greek cross. Crux Desiccata, commonly known as St. Andrew's cross. Crux Camisa, or the Tau cross. And Crux Imisa, or the Latin cross. However, before Christianity adopted these crosses, there were two other forms of crosses that humanity widely used. Perhaps the most ancient cross-type symbol is the crux grammata, or swastika. Variants of this symbol can be found throughout ancient history in the Ukraine, England, Bulgaria, Iran, India, 
Africa, and more locations into recent history. While individual cultures use the symbol for more specific iconography, its most ancient use appears to be to symbolize the rotation of the Earth, as well as the Sun, other astronomical objects, or the absolute God or His emanations. Seen as being composed of four Greek capitals of the letter Gamma, it is marked on many early Christian tombs as a veiled symbol of the cross. The other ancient cross is the crux ansata, or Ankh, which is generally accepted to be representative of life. This symbol, used since approximately 3000 BC, was probably derived from an even earlier symbol, the Tayet, which symbolized protection. As such, the Ankh was depicted in several forms, including the Egyptian gods feeding the Ankh or life into the pharaohs. It was adopted in a slight variation by the Coptic Christians of Africa. In ancient Babylonia, predating the Latin cross, a variant of the Greek cross was used to symbolize the sun god Shamash, with equilateral arms pointing to each of the cardinal compass directions, and was the first cross used by the early Christian church. It is believed to have represented the church, as opposed to the sacrifice of the Christ. It, too, can be found used in conjunction with the Ankh. The equilateral nature of the four arms has numerous esoteric applications which are much worth the effort to research. Equally simplistic in its design is the Saltir, or St. Andrew's Cross, named such for its association with the tradition of the martyrdom of that apostle. As such, it bears all of the characteristics that have been associated with Andrew the Apostle. It has been adopted as a heraldic symbol by many groups and countries and can be found represented in flags, such as the flag of the great state of Mississippi, and is used in symbology throughout the world. Thanks to its design, the Tau Cross is sometimes linked to numerous symbols used throughout antiquity from a vast array of cultures, including the Druids, Egyptians, and more. Potentially, the cross form more appropriate to the actual crucifixion of the Christ, the Tao is traditionally connected to the father of all monks, St. Anthony. The Tao is particularly familiar to Freemasons for its use in the Triple Tao. However, understanding the Tao, or T, as the final letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Dov, and how its written symbol is reminiscent of a gate, the adept may draw out further meanings. The Latin cross, perhaps the symbol we are most familiar with, takes on many deep meanings as well, from representing the redeeming act of the Christ to the characteristics of patience and humility which he displayed while in the mortal flesh. While these symbols are more than satisfactory, a deeper learning can be had by considering the earthly horizontal bar with the heavenly vertical one, their intersection, and so much more. From the Latin cross, many other adaptations have been made, such as the cross of Salem, the patriarchal cross, and the Jerusalem cross, just to name a few. In all, the cross, in whatever form, has always been used to represent that which brings light and life, and to symbolize the most honorable and venerable characteristics of mankind. How will you conquer through this sign? Will you adopt those same venerable characteristics? Will you be the light that is not hidden under a bushel? My brethren, Whatever your understanding may be, I assure you, when you seek to apply it well, in this sign 
thou shalt conquer. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed listening to that. I think if you uh, have ever researched the cross uh, or even just thought about it much, you don't really need to get into the research of it. There's clearly a lot more to the cross than just a simple graphical symbol representation of a crucifix that was used by the Romans. So I hope you've already thought to expand your concepts um, beyond that simplicity. And I think you can easily see how this is a topic that can go for a lot longer than five minutes. Uh, it truly was an honor to be able to present that at my Grand Lodge, uh, and it seemed to be quite well received. So, uh, if you want the actual words, uh, check down in the video description below, and there will be a link. Uh, they'll also be in the cards, uh, the little I button here on the video, and it'll send you over to my website, whatisamason.org, and I have used the speech as an article on my website along with the video embedded in it. Please, brethren, feel absolutely free to share this in your lodges or anywhere else, your personal study or whatever the case may be. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch and thanks to all of our patrons who support the show, to the hundreds of brethren who have already got their own What is a Mason lapel pin. Uh, we're officially in three international countries beyond the boundaries of the United States now, uh, but we still have many states in the United States to cover. So anyway, thanks to the brethren who have supported us uh, and for the brethren who came to the Grand Lodge of Mississippi where I was able to sneak away in a corner and give them a little bit more of the details on why the lapel pin is what it is. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. We'll see you next time. Bye.